Uh, hi, Tracy, and welcome to the New Normal podcast uh, with Dublin Tech Talks. Uh, Tracy Kyo is the co-founder of Grow Remote. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Gavin. Delighted to be here. So do you want to tell us and anybody listening what Grow Remote is and what the kind of the aim of the, the organization is? Sure. So Grow Remote is a social enterprise um, and we're on a mission to enable people to work, live and participate locally. Um, and we do that by making remote work local. So when we say remote work, we mean employment as opposed to anything that happens outside Dublin or entrepreneurship or freelancing. Uh, we want uh, equal access to, to employment opportunity across geographies. Okay, and there's obviously been a bit of a, an uptake in, in, in it over the last few weeks or few months. Yeah. What, what is the kind of initial reaction of the, of the, 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 the enterprise? Uh-huh. How is it kind of Panic. Moved where, where you started to where you are now? If you mean from enterprises now? Um, yeah, from, from where, when you started to kind of where we are yeah. now. And then over the last few weeks, it's obviously changed again. See, we started as community developers. So when we were initially going to companies, we were saying, look, we've got a digital hub here. Or we've got something here. Will you open up 10, 15 jobs in our area? And they were saying no to that because yeah. every community was going to them. And also that's not really commercially solid. Uh, so <clears throat> then we went back up and we knew that access to and retention of talent was their number one challenge. So you're like, you know, just let your talent go. Just win your advertising jobs, widen your talent pool <clears throat> and go far outside, you know, 50 kilometers radius of, of your of your organization. Um, and you can you can have uh, access to talent, but you can, you can also it's proven to help you retain talent. And they were like, yeah, that's such a cool idea. And we'd be in with, you know, large enterprises and everybody would be like, that makes so much sense for community, for environment, for everything. And then nothing would happen. Uh, so it's really, really frustrating <clears throat> to be in that situation. We have full agreement and nothing happens. So it's, it, it's because it's a business transformation yeah. piece that they had to do. And who wants to undertake that of their own volition? So uh, the market needs to force that kind of a thing and in my opinion there needs to be you know deep agitation which we have now yeah the market shunt has, has happened and yeah I'm, I'm guessing organizations that you've had that conversation with previously still weren't ready for it so i'm guessing there was a a, a kind of a, a, a flight to what you do now and the, the kind of consultation side of things and how to yeah. do it right so we um so we have always introduced companies who want to make the transition to, you know, locationless employment to people who have flown the airplane is our latest saying. So just people who've done it before and do it now and then come into companies to help them identify the risks, the pitfalls, all of the downsides, which is what companies want to know about. They want to at least know what they are. Um, and then they go back to their day jobs. So we've always done that, but it's, really ramping up now uh because we kind of leverage the power of community to, to support that um and you know we're finding loads and loads of more people who, who can come into the fold to, to support companies um but i suppose there's, there's lots of different parts of the organization that need to sit down and, and come to an agreement when you're doing this kind of a thing so it's it it's hr it's operations it's all, all of those kind of pieces so you need all of those sides to, to come in and, and support the organization to make to make that change and um, um, what would be the the kind of major pitfalls that companies probably know or just don't plan for and then how you know how, how have you seen them overcome it or how, how has it become normal now to you know they had to do it very quickly so they, they were able to do it so what was the what have you seen as the major pitfalls so the major pitfalls when you go remote normally, um, you know, so before all of this, <clears throat> I know maybe we're not meant to be talking about this, but I can't help it. Um, so before all of this, we, there was a company who rang us and they were like, you need to get us somebody, we need to go remote in four months. That's a deadline, can't go any further than that. So I was like, cool. And the first thing he said to me was, all of, all of our staff have worked in an office and we, there's, there's a very low turnover and they've worked in an office for, you know, the 20 whatever years they've been with us. And then some of them don't want to go home. Yeah. Some of them don't want to go remote. And I was like, that is brilliant that you're considering that. So much like anything else, your people will have diverse backgrounds, needs and wants and all of those things. Um, and so you need to kind of curate, like, curate I guess, it uh, to suit the culture as well that you have within your organization. We found that the pitfalls that some companies have um, 
so if they're hybrid or if they went accidentally remote. So as we came towards full employment, there were people in Dublin, say, for instance, who were in an organization who said, look, I'm going to leave or you can let me go, you know, live someplace else. And they were like, oh, we'll let you go live someplace else. But the organization was still in a central location, not built to keep him engaged or keep her engaged. <clears throat> the culture wasn't there. Yeah. And that 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 was that was down to everybody lost in that in that one because they can't get a raise or a promotion or a progress or all those things you'd expect in a career and the company doesn't get the best out of the person. So you need technology people and policy, technology culture and policy, those three things to move together. And that's how you bring in success. And then you know you're still gonna have <clears throat> much like in, in an office environment, you're gonna have disengaged employees, underperforming employees, all of those things that you have in a normal environment. There'd the be arguments, the, the articles that you read, there'd be articles that you're able to actually identify underperforming employees easier when they're remote because they're, you, you know, you're able to identify what people have actually been doing Yeah. Um, because there's less time wasted and um, the, yeah. the excuses go out the window and it's, it's up to the individual to do their piece of work. But the whole so if the whole environment if the whole organization is is a remote or if hybrid is set up right remote is a great leveler so yeah. like you've got clear clear apis you know what you're at you either do it or you don't and coming in and smoothing with whoever doesn't get you past that yeah. because you know so so it's it's it is a great leveler and everybody's kind of on a more even keel in terms of monitoring um monitoring performance yeah i i was actually surprised i was reading a, a I don't know if it was a post or one of the things that have been sent around to me, but one of the major things that have been purchased have been like screens and laptops and things like that. So organizations weren't really set up for, you know, no. remote working, like still desktop heavy, you know, yeah. little things that the, the, the quick market shunt really exposed a lot of people that were not actually able to go remote. Yeah. Um, Gartner did a survey, uh, and I don't remember the exact stat, but it was something like 70% 70, 70 plus anyway, of CFOs said that they expect part or all of the organization to go fully remote after COVID. I think that that's because CFOs are on numbers and they're after seeing, we're after investing, you know, there's one organization with 300,000 of them are after going remote. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of a cough. Um, 300 are after going remote, so they all had to get that equipment and they all just got a link to Microsoft Teams last week. And they were like, you're on Microsoft Teams now. That's our, that's our office environment, you know. Yeah. The investment in that is, is huge. So I'm, I'm sure that CFOs are looking at it going, that, we're not going to turn that into some cost. We're going to utilize that. Um, there's another, there's an Irish company had to order 200 uh, uh, you know, laptops or la last week uh, and get them shipped out to employees. Like that, that's, a, that's an investment. So I don't think that companies are going to let that investment go to waste, luckily for us. And for us, again, we need those three things, technology, policy, and culture. Once you have technology out of the way, you know, we can, we can knock down the other two um, pretty easily. And the technology part that we is, is getting fixed is obviously broadband and, you know, you know, usage and different things with spikes and rates of, you know, usage in broadband, even in, I, I live in Dublin and even in, you know, suburbs of Dublin have spiked you know, you can yeah. see the difference in, in usage. So I'm guessing that's obviously a, a, a problem which is starting to be overcome, but it's a long journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm refusing to answer questions on broadband anymore because I answered, I think it was, was they telling me that I answered one and it just went so bad. Uh, I suppose the conversation about rural Ireland has always been broadband goes in there and I'm just like, I can't do anything about broadband. Therefore, I'm just going to keep on my track yeah. here and do it like control the controllables which is the only thing that you can do in the midst of transformation or chaos or or, or, or where the majority of things are outside of your control uh so no, it's, it's good you know, my, my belief it is getting fixed i know it's a yeah. it, it's a long journey to to be done and it's probably well overdue but it, it's it's you know technology is there now to be able to do it and yeah you, know, you read articles all the time about why why aren't or um, idea like pushing businesses into central Ireland or into kind of more remote areas because of the investment needed. Like I think now is going to be the, the best time for organizations to say, okay, this actually worked. You, you were able to have half of the staff outside of Dublin. And the, mm. you know, things <clears throat> but I think IDA stats are that the majority of their landings are outside of Dublin. So I think that there's a, there's something in the ether about, you know, 
they're not doing this, that or the other. And then there's the facts that just don't get out into the ether. The reason yeah. that I like to, so the idea as well, as well landed Wayfair, Shopify, they, they're supporting the rollout of eBay remote roles. The biggest remote Irish companies have come through uh, IDA. And the reason that we need to shout about that is because we need an overarching uh, positive narrative to the regions that it's not all like, we're dying, please come home. Uh, yeah, I, I I find it bizarre because like I I was in I'm in recruitment what 13 years and yeah you know the the if you could tell somebody you can get a, a well paid job and not have to pay you know super natural rents or a, a silly mortgage and actually have a, a good quality of life yeah you know it's it's always a good sell and, and it's about companies understanding that and their their own kind of value or employee value proposition and to say here you can have a, a really good job have a great work-life balance and not have to spend two hours of traffic a day. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of remote work. Yeah. But then on the other side, right, because you were saying like, oh, quit the commute. We used to go to the train stations in the morning, whatever else. <clears throat> People were like, I leave the house. I don't have to get the kids ready. don't have to make the breakfast. And then I come back in the evening, you know, the house is tidy and everything again, and I just get to chill. And they really enjoy the two-hour commute both ways. And so there are all these different perspectives, you know, that not everybody. And then somebody else said to us, you know, um, that they their commute in Dublin is a 15 minute walk in the morning. And they just love that, that, you know, it's it's so th there are all these different reasons and, and nuances of why people want to live different lives. And that's why it's fundamentally about enabling choice. So wherever wherever you feel happiest, wherever you are more productive, wherever you're all of those things. And that's where where you should be able to. You, you mentioned something that we've talked about actually a couple of times over the last week or two on, on, on a couple of shows, the, the culture side of things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a big trust issue um, yeah. allowing people work from home. Do you help organizations or discuss that with organizations and yeah. how did most of them kind of overcome that? Yeah. So it was only recently, actually, um, there was a big event in Dublin on remote work and John Reardon was there and it blew up. Right. There was kind of like a, there was nearly a fight at it. And the company, it was about trust. And I was like, surely we are past that. Like we have had. So as I've been in remote now for a couple of years, I'm like, God, like that is such a boring part of it. Like surely we're just like just trust them or don't kind of a thing. Um, whereas, you know, that's not the case at all. And Actually, Shane Evans, who's the founder of one of Ireland's largest homegrown remote company, Scraping Hub, <clears throat> did it. Was doing a webinar last week yeah, for so, to help people yeah. transition to remote, and he was saying like, trust isn't. Well, Mary, we hope you're doing the best thing, and sure, like we've got faith in you. It's it's that's not like that at all. You still question people. You still set in things that they need to do. You don't just it's not just blind faith, you know. And um, and I thought that was. And, and that's why we need people who have flown the airplane to go into other companies to say, here's how it work, works in practice. We're not saying like, even though, you know, Mark has been an under underperforming employee for two years now, that it because he's at home, we need to trust him. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying that uh, there's ways to set up frameworks as well, where trust can be, where it's, where it's okay to trust. Um, but trust is a big thing and absolutely we help with that we help with anything that yeah and it's it's the, the whole thing you, you, you you've employed the person so let, let them go and do their job but if they're not doing their job that's a whole yeah. different conversation exactly exactly it's a whole different conversation or maybe you know some people need training and how to work remotely in which case super like let's let's get that in place um so there, there are things that you can do to to enable that okay bro and obviously the last couple of weeks has changed a, lo a lot and how people perceive yeah. remote working or home working or whichever way we want to yeah. call everybody at, at home at once trying to get the job done. You know, how, how do you think that's going to change attitudes and, and make maybe your life a bit easier of promoting it? So I think that again, back to kind of, so we were focusing on totally locationless companies, right? Because we need to get jobs in our communities and now there's yeah. no time to waste, right? And now we're kind of looking more at that second stream, those companies who are making the transition. I think that now from a central point in enterprises, it'll be much easier to get them to unlock jobs from any location. I think that people might be a little bit traumatized by having to work from a small box and now associate work from home or remote work with like not so good things. And um, so it depends on I suppose there was a there was a piece yesterday where um, there's one Irish newspaper who were talking about 
they're basically saying that some only a small percentage of people who work from home consider themselves to be more productive now. Yeah. Why would you ever, why would you think they'd be more productive now? Like saying, well, actually remote workers aren't more productive because because they're working during a pandemic. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to answer that. So that's why we need to be really careful again about the narrative and how all this, this is framed for people so that they understand. Um, you know, people were, you can't work from the office is not a remote work policy. And if you're working from home, you'll have an office set up, you'll have, you know, probably funded by your employer, you will have all of those things, which you don't have now. So I think we'll have a little bit of um, work to do. I don't think it's all positive for remote work um, in any way. And that's why we're trying to get out ahead of it and get into companies and say, and to people and say, well, actually, this is what you're doing now, but this is what success looks like. And this is what remote done right looks like. And there's a there's a gap, there's a world of difference between those two, and least people will be aware. Yeah, I, I, I don't count at the moment remote working or it's 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 a necessity at the moment to be working yeah. in your house. It's not the it's like when I would usually work from home, there's nobody in my house, it's me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's it's a normal day that you know, kids are at school wife's at work and it's you know you're able to focus and get your work done but there's people who don't have space to have their own office at the moment because they don't have space in their house there's there's all those sorts of things that um and again they're working they're working in organizations where the culture isn't there yeah so because they don't know how to do that so they that's another challenge there's there's loads of challenges uh and that's why it's been important that the right information comes from the right quarters and gets to the right places really, really quickly now. And, and are you just with the, <clears throat> what, you're trying to, the what you're trying to get done, is it, is it more setting up local hubs within kind of areas or is it working yeah. in your house? Or what way are you trying to promote that remote working? Oh, do what you like, right? Go work in a hub, go work in, in, go work in Dublin City Centre, do whatever you want. What we want to do is make sure that the, the information is freely and easily available to you so you understand the full spectrum of choices that you have in terms of employment. So the challenge is that Doist, GitLab, Hotjar, Amazon, Shopify, Wayfair. Like when I go into some rural locations before we started Grow Remote and I said, do you know that Shopify are hiring now? Say in Monaghan, the average salary is 22,000. The starter salary in Shopify is 29 right or 28 something 29 and um, and i say do you know about shopify they'd say no because shopify jobs aren't advertised locally because they're locationless yeah so we're we we're just about kind of ensuring that people are are aware of all of these jobs locally setting up meetups and things like that and for me personally it is really important that that the hubs across the country are supported there's 300 plus of them they're largely mostly community enterprises but what they do which is really really important is bring in what's currently a hidden unemployed into the town into one place and you have all this vibrancy then like imagine a hub in the middle of like clonakilty which there is and there's hoodies going in from hubspot and kitlab and hot jar and like you know in the yeah. middle of rural ireland that's the kind of stuff we want to see, we want to visibly see that vibrancy and the wealth of opportunity that now exists across the country. Yeah, and, and the, the, the spin off from that of, you know, people with disposable income around a town creates two or three coffee shops, creates. And that's a, what we're interested and so, in. And so on and so on. Exactly. So the vacancy rates on the main streets of 17 counties increased last year, right? And that was when the, the economy was going the right direction. Um, the, the, the health of the main street has a huge impact on the health of the surrounding community. So if we can get more income into our communities, but not only more income, where people can spend their time in, their, in our communities, we'll be flying it. Flying it probably yeah, be more, like more now than ever, we need to be able to make sure that it, <laughs> it, it's, it's going to happen because there's going to be a massive need for people to get back out and spend. More now than yeah. ever, rural locations as well. Yeah, so I, there was a, on the news last night, I think it was Bundoran, was it? I don't know, but they were saying that they lost a lot of jobs and they're more heavily impacted than a lot of places because the majority of the of the uh, employment was in tourism um, and hospitality. So what do they do? Like what do they do? So um, we need to get um, we need to diversify the risk uh, and ensure that there are, are more employment streams coming in. Um, so and that's what we're doing. So we're running two two kind of courses at the moment. One is for to help companies transition to remote, and the other one is to help uh, unemployed people get remote work. Um, so that's we'll that's all on growremote.ie yeah it is yeah. yeah absolutely
Well, um, no, thanks, Mill, for your time today. Um, Thank it was you. Really interesting to, to learn a bit more about what you're, 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 you're trying to get forward and into, into the mainstream. Um, I'll put all your contact details on underneath the, the, the video, and it's uh, growremote.ie. And Tracy, thanks, Mill, for your time. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you.